Hi everybody, I'm not, sh not sure if you can uh, see me, just had a couple of uh, technical hitches there, not great. Um, just trying to get the app to work in my phone and that wasn't at all. But hello, uh, I'm Rhiannon and uh, just um, doing one final live today to talk about uh, making and storing your own sourdough starter. So uh, it's great if you can uh, join us today. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, storing and using your starter a little bit. So um, if you've been following my uh, previous um, previous lives, you'll have seen me um, making my own sourdough starter. If you'll just excuse me, just grab some notes. Anyway. As I say, if you've been watching previously, uh, you will have seen me uh, making and uh, a rye sourdough starter, taking you through the step by step and um, going through all of that uh, day by day um, to make your own sourdough starter. And uh, you can watch all back all those videos. And thank you ever so much if you have been watching and commenting. That's been really fantastic. Um, and you can watch them all if you go to the uh, tab. Um, the videos tab in my uh, Facebook page. I've made a playlist so you can watch them back at your own leisure. And hello, if you are watching on a replay, do let me know uh, where you're watching from and whether you've made your own sourdough starter. Um, it's always good to know um, if people and if you've got any questions at all that uh, you need answering. Um, so um, previously we got to day five of making a sourdough starter and. Um, Posted some pictures of what I'll post some pictures of what it looked like uh, yesterday once day five had finished, um, and um, I also said that in my last live that was on the Sunday that we'd have a look at storing your starter and also um, using it, what you can use it for. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about that today. Um, so first of all, I just want to show you uh, my starter now. So I last refreshed this when I did a Facebook Live on Sunday night. So we're now Tuesday afternoon. And um, basically it hasn't been fed um, and it was going great guns. So there was plenty of yeast activity in there. And um, the starter was really, really um, active. And um, because I haven't fed it, it's now on the wane a bit. So naturally my other half complained about the smell of it last night because instead of a nice, pleasant, fruity smell, it now smells vinegary. It's starting to smell much more acidic. And that, um, if you watch back some of the uh, previous videos I did, you'll know that there's going to be a combination of um, bacteria and, acid, and yeast um, colonies that will live symbiotically. They'll live uh, well together. And they're both necessary in your starter for different reasons. Um, and they both have different functions. Um, and often the, when you make a new starter, the bacteria can actually get going a bit more quickly than the yeast. And that can lead to some of the problems people see with starting their own starter because um, the bacteria take hold, they produce a lot of acids, and that can make it a difficult environment for the yeast to get hold of get a foothold, sorry, and um, your starter um, begins to smell, like I said, acidic. It starts to go acetony. That's like nail polish remover, paint stripper. So um, if it does go like that, don't worry, um, because you can uh, get it back. And we did talk about this in previous videos by doing a big, nice big feed where you give it lots of fresh flour and water. Um, but... Uh, don't worry, uh, as I say, but I'll just show you a bit of it. Turn this around. <coughs> Excuse me. So as you can see, um, it does look really bubbly, but honestly, that's, some of that's probably coming from what is now bacteria as well. If I just scrape back the surface, you'll actually see that underneath... Those bubbles are resting on kind of quite watery starter. It's quite um, liquid now and it's fallen away. Can you see this tide mark up here? Probably didn't get quite that high, but there will be a tide mark where what happens is as your yeast um, get going, um, your, your starter should rise up the bowl and you should definitely uh, see this. Um, and um, you should definitely be able to see where the yeast rises up um, and but what happens is once the uh, yeast have given, uh, where the starter rises up, once the yeast have started um, 
to die off or their activity has started to die off at least because they're running out of food and they're going dormant again the starter will actually start to collapse the levels of it will start to collapse down and um, that's an important thing um, to think about because it's a good way of knowing um, when you uh, you're testing whether your starter is ready to bake with whether it's good and active or not it's good to know um, that your starter is either um, is good and bubbly and whether it's rising up your bowl um, or whether it's kind of sinking down and losing the yeast activity that's actually what you want. Um, so first of all, we'll talk about storing that. So I don't want to do any more refreshes of this. I think I've got to a point where I've established colonies in it that I think will make bre good bread um, and I want to store it. So um, how do I get to the point where I can store it and use it without killing off the yeast because I'm not going to give them any more food? For me, and um, we did have a, a question previously over on my Instagram when I asked this about how well, it seems very wasteful, you throw so much of it away. Well, that's true if you feed it every day. Uh, if you were baking every day, if you were running your own bakery or you just wanted to bake sourdough every day, yeah, you'd have to feed your, your um, starter on a, a really good schedule. It would probably be every 12 hours if you're in a bakery and um, you would have to make sure you kept it active and at that peak point where it's nice and bubbly, full of yeast, rising up the bowl, ready to go and bake bread. Um, and if you're going to bake, then yeah, you'd probably be removing about half of your starter. And the key here is always to have some left over. Never use it all up in a bake um, because otherwise you're just going to have to start this whole process from scratch again uh, when, if you throw away all your starter or bake with it all. So... Um, yeah, so if you went and baked with half of it, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be wasting it, you'd be making bread with it, and you'd be feeding it regularly, and you'd be coping with the amount of starter that you've generated. If you look back over the recipe that we've used to make this starter, you'll work out that we've probably made about, um, I think we said about 400 grams of starter by now. So it's quite a lot in five days, um, even though we start, only started with 25 grams of flour, it quickly multiplies up. So I want to store this. And uh, the one way to store it, that means I can just keep it kind of in limbo, basically, is uh, to put it in the fridge. Now, um, what will happen in the fridge? I'm always saying that yeast, are just like us, um, they like to be fed, they like to be kept warm, they like oxygen, and uh, you know, the basic needs are very much the same. Um, but the one thing that they do like, um, well, they're happy to uh, tolerate, uh, that we can't, is cold. And I mean like five degrees and below, like in your fridge. And um, so they won't die in there. They'll just go to sleep. And um, so that's the best way to store your starter is in the fridge if you're not going to use it every day. Now, what will happen is your yeast will go dormant, but you can wake them back up with the, feed, the refreshing, the feeding process that we were just talking about in previous videos. So... Um, you, um, you perhaps would have to plan it slightly. You might have to do two feeds, maybe one every 12 hours. Um, so one in the morning, one in the evening. And then by the next morning, you'd have the starter will be kind of woken up again and you'd have fed it and brought it back to room temperature. It would be nice and uh, um, bubbly again. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind if you're planning out a bake with starter that you keep in the fridge. So how do I store it? Well, I certainly don't just put it in this bowl because it's going to dry out in the fridge and also it doesn't smell great. So uh, it's starting to smell vinegary and it will smell more vinegary. And actually it will get to the point where um, you, you basically make a uh, hooch, for want of a better word. Uh, your yeast will take, um, because they run out of food and they run out of oxygen, they'll actually go into alcoholic fermentation, beer making basically. Um, and uh, not that I'm suggesting in any way you should drink the liquid that comes off it. Don't do that. But, <laughs> um, uh, but it's, that's basically what you'll, you'll make. You'll find this thin layer of liquid on, on the top of, um, um, of the top of your sourdough starter if you leave it in the fridge. And that's totally normal. Um, but so how would I store it? Well, I've got here, um, and if you ever make um, preserves or jams, you'll probably be familiar. I'm sure you're all familiar with these jars. Uh, see if that will so a kiln jar there um, and the seal separately there and all that I've done is um, you see it's on a baking tray I popped that uh, cleaned it with soapy water, hot soapy water and then I popped it into the fridge uh, the fridge into the oven at about 100 degrees to sterilize it so if you do make jam you'll probably be um, con um, aware of this process already you just sterilize your your um, your jars so maybe 10-15 minutes 
in a hot oven, well, a 100 degree, 150 degree oven, no warmer. Obviously, don't put the rubber seal in, that will melt. I tend to, um, I've got it in that container there, I've just poured boiling water over it, be very careful when you do that, uh, sluiced it through boiling water. Um, and that's what I'm going to store my starter in. So, um, and I use a, a kiln jar because they are built to kind of preserves. And obviously the one thing you need to think about is that your starter is still going to be making gas, even um, in, uh, in the fridge. As I said, um, sourdough uh, doesn't, it doesn't uh, die, the, start, the yeast doesn't die in the fridge, so the yeast will still be slightly active and there'll be a tiny bit of gas production, so it's good to use a nice sturdy jar like this. I wouldn't use like a jam jar or anything else. Um, I've seen um, dough, maybe not sourdough starter, but I've seen dough break through um, clip, clip shut Tupperware, um, literally burst the top off, so that can happen. And um, so just bear that in mind. It's probably worth, worth getting a nice solid jar. Also, the other thing you need to think about is not filling it right to the top. So um, I'm not going to fill it more than about kind of halfway. I definitely won't be filling it up to the brim because what will happen is, is that, you, and I've had this happen to me, uh, filled it too much. The starter doesn't go dormant for a while in the fridge. It takes a while to cool down to the fridge temperature. And... Um, it just escapes. It will it will break through the seal, puddles all over your fridge, and uh, you will you'll find that. So um, <laughs> so just uh, bear that in mind. But that is how I store it. Pop it in the fridge, and uh, there you go. So if you were wondering about storage, that's how I do it, um, and it's there for, ready for me to bake with. So I hope that's helpful, and uh, it's a way of kind of keeping your hard work and not having to waste more flour, continuously feeding it if you keep it out on the side. Um, and I hope that kind of doesn't, I hope that helps people because I know it can put you off when you're reading recipes and you're like, well, what do I do with it at the end? I can't just keep feeding it. I don't want to bake more potato dough bread. Um, so I hope that's a bit more helpful. Um, so the other thing I said I'd talk to about today was... Um, using your starter um, so you've got this nice bubbly starter but it's not going to make bread unless you make it into some dough and uh, let it rise as if you were uh, making a normal bread so um, I've had lots of uh, questions um, about kind of using it and using it with different flours because obviously we've made a rye sourdough starter here and uh, well personally uh, rye flours uh, rye bread is not my personal preference if I was baking at home and um, uh, totally great if it is yours but I can understand you might not want to be you might thinking oh, I can only make rye bread now well no absolutely not basically you can convert your rye once you've got it nice and bubbly and I don't mean at the stage you just saw there because that's that wasn't nice and bubbly it's gone acidic um it needs to be refreshed with more flour before I can use it in um a dough but if it's nice and bubbly and it's maybe it's within say 8 to 12 hours of its last feed um, your starter is good to go and what I would do then if I was going to make a wheat sourdough and I did this this morning if you see my uh, Instagram um, the Epsom Bakehouse on Instagram you'll see in the stories that I was making a uh, dough and uh, I'll show you it in a minute but um, I made a what I kind of call a poolish I call it a poolish um, it's hard to um, let me just see. Hello, if you're watching, I'm just uh, uh, trying to see who you are, but I never, I can never make it work on this phone, which is really bad. But hi there, uh, lovely to have you along today. Um, we're just talking about storing and using up your sourdough starter and how you can bake bread with it. And um, we're just talking about using your starter. And um, I should have said I'll post some uh, some links, so I'll uh, post a link um, to my sourdough section on my website. Um, which has the, the starter um, process in there. Um, and then, um, uh, anyway, so making a, a poolish. So basically all I did was we were talking about refreshing your starter in the previous days. So all I've done is taken about 10 grams of a nice, bubbly, well-fed rye starter. And instead of feeding it again with rye flour, I fed it with wheat flour. I took it separately, so I didn't use up all my rye flour. I've kept, you know, obviously you just saw in the bowl, I've kept my rye flour um, starter separate. But I've taken some out and I've fed it overnight with wheat flour. So uh, white wheat flour and um, the yeast that's present already in the rye 
um, have chomped their way through the uh, wheat flour overnight, had a good feed, and made a nice bubbly, um, essentially a new starter almost. <laughs> ah, hello, Sherry. <laughs> I see you there. Um, thank you for commenting. Uh, a nice, uh, a nice uh, bubbly a new starter, basically, but a temporary one. I'm gonna, and then I made up, made it up to a full dough afterwards. So. Um, when that's when that's all bubbly in the morning, and I'll post the pictures later that I took. But basically, I fed it overnight, so maybe uh, eight to ten hours overnight. Um, it was nice and bubbly in the morning, mainly wheat flour, and then I made it up made it up to a full dough the next morning. So probably, let me just think about the proportions that I used. So I had about um, seventy grams of flour that I and, and seventy grams water. So it was equal amounts of uh, flour and water that I added overnight. And um, um, so I had about 70 grams of flour, and then I added in another 500 grams of flour, um, what wheat flour, to make a final dough. So it's quite a large loaf. But in that, there was only 10 grams of rye right at the beginning. Um, so it's a very small proportion. And then I probably had about 70 grams of flour. So it's, again, it's less than the fifth of the final dough um, that you make up overnight. So that's one way of using it to convert your rye starter. You just feed it with the other fl the flour you actually want to use in your dough overnight. Um, always remembering to keep a bit of your rye starter um, over in the fridge, on the side if that's what you're doing, um, and because uh, you always need to keep some. Um, so that is one way of using it, and I'll just show you that dough now. So my timetable for that was last night get the a spoonful or so, about 10, 20 grams of the rye starter into some uh, white wheat flour and water, leave that overnight, mixture overnight, for say 12 hours, again it was only like 10 minutes of my time last night, leave it overnight and then this morning make a dough at about 10 o'clock and then leave that to proof for about three or four hours and then I've shaped it and uh, this is it now, sh uh, so we're, what time are we at? 4.20, so made the dough about 10, so that's kind of getting on for six hours of proving time but that's great because sourdough takes forever so here it is in a banneton it's not definitely not ready yet it's only been in there for about an hour or so but that will eventually make white and you can see it's a white flour so if you compare it it's definitely not rye that's rye and gray a bit sluggish you can see it's got a tiny bit of uh, the specks of rye in it so it does have some but um, it's uh, not all of it. So that was a dough I made. And I'm talking about the timings because I had a question from Elaine who, um, who was on Instagram at Boss Like a Mum. And she was definitely interested in the kind of fitting this around a busy lifestyle. Um, if you can work out, work backwards from when you want to bake. If you've um, left your starter in the fridge, you're going to need 24 hours to refresh it, to get it back to a nice bubbly state, and that's refreshing it with the rye flour, if you've got a rye flour starter. Then you need to do the conversion to it to wheat, um, which will be overnight, so another 12 hours. And then you need a, um, another day to make your dough, but it's not like a whole day of work, you just leave it to do its thing. So if I was doing this um, and I didn't want to think, oh my gosh, You've got to work it out so you're not baking at like 10 o'clock at night. You suddenly think, I've got to bake that loaf now because otherwise it's going to overprove. Um, the one thing you can do with sourdough is, that's great is that now it's at that stage where it's in the banneton, and that's the proving basket you just saw, um, you can actually pop them into the fridge. Remember I said the yeast doesn't die in the fridge, it just goes a lot more slowly. So you can prove it overnight. So that's like another, gives you another 12 hours. So if you'd made your dough, say in the middle of the day, and then you'd only shaped it at, say, 5, 6 o'clock at night. Maybe once you get back from work, if you can, you can work it to that point. Um, or you come back from a day, day out. Um, then you can pop it in the fridge and leave it to prove. And then you can actually bake it straight from the fridge the next day, some point in the morning. Um, so that's, it's just a way of slowing the process down to break it up so it fits around your life. So, Elaine, if you do watch this on replay, and I'll, uh, I'll send you a link. Um, that's a way of, bake, of uh, breaking it up. Um, I did also have a question on Instagram about making additions, and yeah, um, sourdough as a starter, um, it's, it's basically just like having yeast. Um, 
that you can make any bread with it so you definitely don't just have to make a wheat bread a rye bread you can add seeds in add nuts in make a dough uh, like you normally would um, but you're just using the sourdough starter instead of commercial yeast so there's plenty of additions that you can make to sourdough breads and i do encourage you to go out and look at some recipes um, and um, um, and you'll start baking some really great breads i always say that about any bread making to be honest that uh, once you master kind of the basics, there's a whole range of stuff you can go out and do there. So that's some of the questions I had about storing and using your sourdough starter. Um, and actually, this will be my final live about making a sourdough starter, a rye sourdough starter. And I hope if you've been watching them that you've really enjoyed them. If you're watching them on the replay, thanks very much. And if you've just caught this one, but you haven't seen all the others, you can definitely go and check them out um, in the videos tab on my Facebook page. Um, there's a playlist there entitled how to make your own uh, rye sourdough starter and all the videos and I'll put this one in once it's finished will be there and um, there's also some posts on my page um, I didn't video every single day of my sourdough starter being made but I did photograph it so you could see the progress it made um, there's also um, a page and I'll just post that now in the links uh, in the comments just bear with me So that's my uh, how to make a sourdough starter um, page there. And uh, that takes you through the process that I've done on these videos. So you've got that there to work through. Um, and um, that's about all I'd like to say. And the only other thing I'll say is that um, if you want to know more about making different loaves and different sourdough starters, uh, sorry, different sourdough loaves with your starter, then um, I do run classes here in Epsom. My next ones are on the 26th of October and the 9th of November um, and I'll pop a link again in the comments. Um, we make six different loaves during the day so um, it's a small class but it still ends up looking like a bakery in the kitchen. Um, it's very hands-on, you get to make all the loaves and take them home and um, we discuss the different techniques that we're using, we discuss making your starter and the different pitfalls you might encounter and we discuss using your starter leftovers so how can you use up starter that you've not refreshed but you might want to use it. It's a great way of flavouring um, breads, yeasted breads especially, um, or other products um, there. So do um, have a look at the links if you want to find out more about using uh, making a sourdough starter um, and uh, check back. Um, I'll be showing you, hopefully, <laughs> see if it works, this bread that I baked. I'll pop some pictures on but that was made using the starter that I started on Thursday. So it's a really great one, uh, just great way of showing you that hopefully it worked. I mean, it certainly was, it's certainly been enough to rise a dough, so hopefully it'll rise it enough to get a good bake. But otherwise, thank you ever so much for watching. Um, thanks for your comments. Do let me know if you've got any other questions in the comments on this. If you're watching the replay as well, please do let me know if you have any comments. I'll come back and check, definitely, and I'm happy to answer questions. Otherwise, um, I will say have a lovely evening. It's Bake Off Day. Hope you're watching later. Um, I'm sticking with bread today, as you've seen, but everyone else will be making caramel and trying not to burn their fingers. So hope you enjoy watching it and uh, I'll see you again soon. Thanks very much. Bye.